Having tried so many anti-aging devices and treatments in the past few years, and most of them with a unique selling point, I can understand why people find it hard to choose and know which is the most effective. And I'm often asked in the comments of my videos which device or product I would recommend to an individual. And it's impossible to answer really because I don't know their age or the condition of their skin. But what did occur to me recently, and this is why I decided to do this video, is that there's one key thing that links pretty much every anti-aging device and treatment. And understanding that and how it relates to the individual products and treatments on offer is what will enable you to make the best decision for your age and stage in life. So my aim is to keep this really simple, work through the, the decades and the treatment options available, so that by the end of this video, you'll feel more informed and confident about the choices you make. So before we get straight into it, just to flag that I have a wide range of product and treatment reviews, expert interviews and more. So do browse the channel to find the ones of interest to you. And don't forget to hit subscribe along with the notification bell to watch my future videos. So whether we're talking about retinoid serums, including of course the all-powerful tretinoin or the at-home anti-aging devices ranging from microcurrent, microneedling, sonic massage, red light, blue light, laser, heat therapy, radio frequency, or ultrasound. There is so, so much to choose from. It's literally mind boggling. But here's what links them. Every one of those treatments is designed to stimulate your skin cells. The thing that separates them is the strength and the depth they reach into the layers of your skin. Because obviously as we age and our bodies become a bit less efficient, we produce less collagen, which is what keeps our skin plump. And we also produce less hyaluronic acid, which hydrates our skin. So what we wanna do is excite and stimulate our skin cells to basically make them act like they're young again and prompt them to up their game and their productivity levels. So it's like, come on skin cells, let's keep this show on the road. And isn't it great that we can do that and you don't have to pay a fortune in the process. And our age and how advanced the signs of aging are on our skin, because that will vary wildly depending on your skin type, those two things really then dictate the kind of stimulating treatments you should be looking at. So let's take a look through the decades. For someone in their 20s who has virtually no visible signs of aging, there's no need to be snapping up anti-aging devices. You are in protect and prevent mode at that age. So you should just be using sunscreen each day because it's sun damage that's gonna age your skin most rapidly. I wish I'd known that in my 20s when I was out there slapping tan accelerator oil on in the sunshine or thinking factor eight was a very high factor. Do you remember those days? If your mum bought factor 15, you'd think she was out of her mind. You'd be going, I can't use this, I'm not gonna tan. And then you'd wonder why you were lobster red with heat stroke by the end of a day on the beach. How little we knew. So you want a minimum factor of 30 and a broad spectrum SPF to protect your skin these days. I use factor 50 pretty much most days. Now stepping up to your 30s, the level of aging showing on the skin can again vary wildly. I have thicker oilier skin, my husband would tell you I have very thick skin, which my skin isn't so sensitive to the sun and that has benefited me in terms of aging. But I've got friends with much finer, drier complexions who were beginning to show lines in their 30s. And that can even start in your 20s for some people. So for most people in their 30s, you're gonna still be in prevent and protect mode. But depending on your skin type and the stage, how far through your 30s you are, you wanna start stepping up and introducing a retinoid into your regime for gentle stimulation. And I'll suggest a few favorite retinoids in the description below where you'll find uh, links to all the products and devices I'm discussing today, some of which I have discount codes for. So by introducing a gentle retinoid at this stage, that's where we're starting to stimulate our skin. We're putting a bit of extra work in by targeting the surface layers and boosting our skin cell turnover, which is going to boost our skin's ability to produce both hyaluronic acid and collagen. Result. Some people in their 30s 
might be starting to use things like Botox treatments as a preventative measure. I'm not thrilled by the idea of doing that so young unless you're starting to develop very prominent lines which really bother you. But ultimately, you know, I think we're probably best to work with nature, especially at that age, but it's a personal decision. I totally get that this is really important for some people and you have to do what works for you. In your later 30s, you might also want to look at using something like a microcurrent roller, like this Phoenix self-powered device here that just gently stimulates the skin and the muscles, helping to keep everything tight or something like the Foreo Luna, which I'm trying out at the moment. And it uses sonic vibration to firm the skin. It has silicone bristles for deep cleansing as well. And so that's a very attractive combination, powerful enough to make a difference, gentle enough that you can use it daily and easily integrate it into your routine. In your 40s, that's when the game really starts stepping up. You are in prevent, protect, and stimulate to rejuvenate mode, where you'll likely be looking to increase the strength of your retinoid. And possibly as you move through your 40s, look at something like tretinoin, which is now what I use for rejuvenation. I use the Dermatica prescription skincare service to order my tretinoin, and I'll link to the review here. And I'm heading towards uh, five months now, of stepping up through the tretinoin strengths and I'm really happy with how it's going so far and what it's doing for my skin. But I'm 49. Before this, I'd been using a high strength retinaldehyde. So again, I will link to the different options in the description below and you can take a look. This is also the stage in life when you're probably gonna be eyeing the multitude of anti-aging devices more carefully. And where you go with that really depends on your skin type degree of visible aging and you as well in that devices that you need to use very frequently or that are uncomfortable to use will not suit everyone. Microcurrent and or sonic massage is a great starting point for anti-aging. You've got the new face or the Foreo Bayer facial toners which are among the market leaders for a reason. They are a little bit of an investment initially, but they're robust and I find them more comfortable to use than cheaper copycats. Microcurrent paired with retinol, and probably at this stage adding in hyaluronic acid through a moisturizer or serum, which is gonna hydrate your skin. Also vitamin C for skin brightening, and I can recommend a hyaluronic acid serum with vitamin C added, and it's sold on Amazon. I've got that in the description below. I've been using that recently and enjoying it. And that mix is gonna serve you well into your 40s. You could also add in something like a red light mask to use once or twice a week, which is penetrating the upper layers of your skin to gently stimulate and encourage further collagen production. So that's a long-term um, investment to be used longer term. And for those who don't like the idea of using at-home devices or more powerful retinoids, you might want to go to an aesthetic clinic and look at something like skin peels for resurfacing the top layer of your skin or um, regular microneedling sessions. Both those options are well-evidenced anti-aging treatments that should make a visible difference. Of course, through all the decades, we wanna be using sunscreen to keep the protection going, and it's just a given for anti-aging. Now, into your 50s, where I'm heading next year, if you've been following an anti-aging routine in your 40s, you could more or less keep going in the same direction, but potentially step it up even further for deeper stimulation, so you're going deeper into the dermal layers. On the other hand, if you're just starting to think about an anti-aging routine in your 50s and have more visible signs of aging and a loss of laxity in your skin, which we all do at some degree at that age, then I would suggest you look at an aesthetic clinic near you, preferably ones that are led by medical professionals, and talk to them about skin rejuvenating options to give you an initial boost before you then move to maintain the results through the kind of routines I've already described. Microcurrent and most of the at-home treatments won't do very much if you have 
pretty visible loss of skin laxity and heavier lines. You need to tackle that first before moving on to a maintenance routine. So watch my video on the best non-surgical treatments available and the associated risks before making your decision. Things like ultrasound and radio frequency based treatments carry a risk of fat loss. So I would recommend you avoid on areas where you don't have fat to lose and focus more on the jowls and particularly under the chin for those sorts of treatments. The key here is as before, we are still looking to stimulate our skin in our late 40s, 50s and beyond. But there is a need to reach the deeper dermal layers and that's why you're looking at introducing treatments that are more powerful and can go deeper. In your later 40s, 50s and beyond, there are some good and more powerful at-home devices that you could look at that use radio frequency in particular, which is kind of the gold standard for heavier duty non-surgical facelifting at the moment. And I will link to my video guide on that here and to the device I use in the description below. My own routine as I approach my 50s involves using a daily microcurrent or sonic massage device. And remember, I review different products for this channel, so I can't stick with the same thing long term. But I do use uh, Dermatica, Tretinoin daily, Hyaluronic acid and vitamin C2. I use a red light mask once a week for 20 minutes. And twice a month, sometimes just once if I'm busy, I use the Lumo radio frequency device by Even Skin for that deeper stimulation that's hopefully going to help prevent skin sagging or delay it. I'm also about to start using a new laser device on my chest and the back of my hands. So you'll be hearing about that from me in the, the autumn. I can tell you trying out all these different devices, there is a careful balancing act for me to not overstimulate my skin. So I have to carefully target different solutions to different areas and watch not to overdo it. Phew. So. That was a whirlwind tour based on my experience of the anti-aging options to take you through the decades, which I really, really hope you found helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments. I love to read them and to hear your views and experiences. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to watch my future ones. For now, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.